Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me and uh, can you see my screen? Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, let's start now. Welcome to this lab session. I'm Chen Zhan, and uh, this is my email address. Today, I will talk about uh, the level five, which is about the inode. And uh, okay, firstly, let me introduce the goal of this of this lab. And uh, in the project, you will be asked to implement some basic functions of a simple file system, the SFS. So today's lab, the lab five and the lab four of last week, uh, provide you some prelogies to help you to understand the project. Okay, so firstly, also let me introduce some background about the inode. And uh, as you know, the inode is uh, described the metadata of, of a file. So each file have an inode and the inode describes the metadata of this file. For example, the metadata includes what is the type of this file. For example, is it a regular file or a directory file? And uh, it also contains the metadata about how many bytes does this file contains and how many data blocks does this file occupy? And what are the indexes of those data blocks? So you can see this figure. This orange box show a, a inode and these blue boxes are data blocks. So the inode include the indexes of these data blocks. So once you get the inode, you can get all the data blocks of a specific file. And then you read the content inside these data blocks, then you can get the content of the file. So this is the basic idea of the inode. Okay, so this slides show a basic uh, data structure of inode. And this data structure will also be used in our SFS. You can see there are several parameters. Let me introduce them one by one. Firstly, the inode number. The ILO number means the index of this inode. So once you get an inode number, you can use the inode number to get this inode from the hard disk. Okay. The second parameter is the creation time, which means the creation time of this file. So this is uh, automatically set when you create a file. So, but in our simple file system, you don't need to create any file. So this information is not important. You can just uh, 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 get familiar with it, but uh, it will not be used. And then this, this one, the type of file, the file type. Yeah, and for our SFS, we use zero to represent the regular file and use one to represent the directory. And uh, then this one, the file size, it means the size of the, this file. And this is uh, the granularity is bytes. So it, it means how many bytes we have for this file. And then the block number, this, is also described the file size, but the granularity is the block size. So it means how many data blocks are occupied by this file. And then this one, the, that, then this, this two, these two are two pointers, you can say. The direct block, we have two direct block pointer and the one indirect block pointer. So these two are very important because these two are the pointers to the data blocks. So whenever we get an inode, the most important two pointers we want to get is these two, the direct block and the indirect block. And finally, the sub block number, this is only used for directory. So it means how many number of files are stored in this directory. And for the regular file, it is always zero. Okay, so this is the basic data structure of inode. 
And then uh, after we introduce the inode, the second uh, uh, the second background is about uh, our directory. So the directory is a special file, and uh, you can think about it in our simple file system. The ordinary files and the directories, they are both described by inodes. And it's easy to image how the regular files are stored in our simple file system. So firstly, it has an inode, and the inode, it contains the metadata, for example, the inode number, the, uh, and the two very important pointers, the direct, direct block and the indirect block. And then the pointers point to several data blocks and the, yeah. And then how about a directory? So a directory is also a file, but it's a special type of file. It also has inode and the data blocks, but the difference is that the data blocks stored in the directory, they don't store the user data, but Instead, they store a list of special data structure, which is called directory mappings. And this is a mapping of the file name and the inode number. So this is a typical data structure of directory mapping. You can say it's a very simple data structure, only contain two parameters. First, the first parameter is the file name and the second parameter is the inode number. So the directory mapping is just a mapping from the file name to the inode number. And then once you get a directory mapping, you can get the mapping from the file name to the inode number. Okay, so after we know about that directory mapping, so how to look for a specific file under current directory. So you can see this figure. In our simple file system, the inode of the directory, for example, this one, and it has a pointer point to the data block. And inside this data block is stored the direct mappings. You can say this is a list of direct mappings. The first one is the file name, the second, why is show the uh, inode number. So when you look for a specific file on the current directory, actually you are traverse this list and uh, compare the directory mapping one by one and uh, compare the file name with your target file. For example, if you are, fine, you are looking for file one, you are traversing this and compare and finally you find this file one is here and then you can return the idle number, which is 36, okay? So this is how we use the directory mappings to find a specific file on the uh, specific directory. Okay, so that's all about, about the pro, uh, background. Then in today's lab, I have prepared a C program to a very simple C program to help you understand these backgrounds and uh, uh, philosophies. So we provide a simple program to show the structure of the inode and how to use it. You can download this file from the Blackboard and uh, after you unzip it, you can find these five files under, under the code directory. Firstly, the HD is the hard disk simulation file. I have discussed this last week. So you don't need to modify this. And uh, yeah, it's just a file, binary file, which represents the hard disk. So you can use the read function to read from this hard disk simulation file. And then the soup block .h, this header file has been discussed last week and it contained the data structure of soup block and the several parameters of the SFS. And these three are new, program uh, which will be used in today's lab. The inode.h, this header file contains the data structure of the inode and uh, the data structure of the director mappings. And in the inode.c, this C program, we contain several basic read functions about the inode and also some print functions to show 
the inode information and the inode region on the hard disk. And this function print director mappings will show the director mappings on the specific directory. And this inode test, it contain two test cases. The first case show how to use the inode information and the inode region on the hard disk file. And the second case show how to uh, show the director mappings under the root directory. Okay, so this is uh, five files under our code directory. And then you can download it and uh, compile it, use this command, use the GCC and uh, use these two files, the inode.test.c and inode.c. Then you can get this inode test runnable file and then you can run it use this command i know test and uh, include use the hard disk simulation file as the parameter and after you run it you can get this result uh, shown on your terminal you can say you first compile it use the gcc and then you run it use the i know test then you can say uh, two test cases the first test case have two sub test cases. Let me introduce the, uh, explain the result here. So the case one by one, it shows the root directory I know information. You can say this is what we read from the hard disk and uh, initialize an inode, root inode in the memory. And we can get this information. For example, the inode number of root directory is zero and the creation time is here, and the fail type is one because it's a directory, is one, and fail size is 144. So this is the, uh, how many bytes? And block number is one. Yeah, it only contain one data block. And then you can say it's direct block zero is zero. And uh, yeah, and the, the, you can say the sub fail number is six. So we have six, six sub fail on the current, uh, root directory. And the case one dot two, it show how the root directory is stored on the hard disk. You can say this is what is stored on the hard disk. And each line of this is corresponding to the, this line in the case one dot one. You can say these are li line lines, and these are also line lines. And each one is uh, one to one map to this one. And for example, the fail size is 144. So it it is represented in decimal, which is one hundred. But if you transfer it to hexadecimal, it's ninety nine zero. So you can say in the fourth fourth line, it is not zero zero nine zero. So this is how it this information is stored in in the hard disk. And then the case two show the director mappings inside the data block of the root directory. You can say this is how it is stored. And the, the first line show the file name, the second line sh show the inode number. So for example, dot, its inode number is zero. Double dot is also zero. This is because the dot means the, the current directory itself. So for the root directory, it is all, always zero. And double dot means the parent directory. And because it's the root directory, so it is also zero. And then it contains four, four subdirectories, directory five, four, directory seven, and the directory 10. So they are, I know number are one, two, three, four correspondingly. Okay. So this is the result. I will do this experiment with you together uh, next. And finally, let me uh, talk about uh, some implementation issues. So the core function of the inode.c, the C program, are two functions, the read, read inode and the print directory mappings. First, firstly, the read inode, it's uh, initialized an inode uh, space in the memory, and then uh, read the inode from the hard disk. And this one is very, you can, if you have attended the uh, last week's lab, 
you will be very familiar. Last week we have talked about the read SB, read the block. So this, the implement implementation is very similar. So last week we read the hard soup block from the hard disk. Then this week we read the inode. So it's very similar. And then the second one, print directory mappings. So this one is very important. So it shows how to iterate the director mappings in a specific uh, uh, data block. So you can say, firstly, we initialize a directory load type pointer. So this, this type is, it means the director mapping. So we first initialize a pointer P block, then this will be pointer to the directory mapping list. Then we read the data block from the hard disk into the memory region, which are initialized by this, by this director mapping list. And then uh, according to, the, to this pointer directory block zero, and this, we only use directory block zero for our SFS. This is because we, the maximal inode number is 100. So for our simple file system, we only support 100 inodes. So because the 100 multiple by the size of directory node is smaller than four kilobytes. So only the directory block zero will be used. So we only need to read the directory block zero from the hard disk. And then we can iterate this directory mapping list one, one by one by using this pointer P block and then print out all the entries. And for more detailed information, you can read these two C program. Okay, so that's all of today's uh, uh, slides and then Next, I will do the experiment together with you. Okay, so can you see my screen? Can you see the X Ubuntu here? Okay, thank you. Okay, I will do the experiment together with you. You can you can also download the program from the hard disk, uh, from the from the blackboard. And after you unzip it, you can get these, these five files, these five files, and then you can compile it to use the GCC. Use this GCC inode test and with these two files, inode test.c and inode.c. And after you compile it, you can get this runnable file, inode test. And then you can run it, use this command, I know test HD. And then after you run it, you can, yeah, you can get this result. Okay, I have explained this just uh, in the slides. And then let me introduce how we implement it. So the most important one is this, I know test. You can say we have uh, the, the read inode, you can see it's very similar with the read SB. Firstly, we, in, we use the malloc, which means allocate in the memory and the size is the inode. And then the pointer is this IP. And then we use LSIG to move the position from the beginning of the hard disk simulation file to the inode offset plus the inode number multiple by the inode. So this means we move the pointer to the specific inode number uh, inode. Then we read from the hard disk simulation file and uh, return the, return the inode pointer. And this one is very simple. So we just print the inode information by using this inode pointer. You can see we just use the uh, inode pointer to get its parameters. And then finally this one, the print director mappings, this one is important. So you can say how we read a specific uh, data block and how to iterate the director mappings. So you can say, firstly, we initialize an inode pointer and then use the read inode. This function is just this one. 
and read the inode from the hard disk simulation file and get the inode pointer. And then we initialize a P block. The type is, you can say is a list and the, the type is the direct dynode, their node. So the third node is just the directory mappings. And then uh, we firstly malloc the block size because we want to read a, a total data block from the hard disk simulation file. So we firstly malloc a block size. And then you can say we get the IP, the IOL pointer, we get is directory block zero and uh, get the block number and then move the pointer, move the position from the beginning of the hard disk simulation file to the data block offset plus block number multiplied by the block size. Then we read the block to this P block. Then we can use a simple uh, iteration to iterate this P block list and the print, you can say we print is fair light name and the ILO number one by one. Okay. So let's hold off today's lab. You have, if you have any question, you can ask me now. If not, we don't have any uh, homework for these two labs, lab four and lab five, because these two are some prelogy to the project. So you can say we have several very useful functions, which will help you to understand how to implement the project. So I hope uh, after you learn this two lab, it, 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 it should be very easy to implement the project. Okay, thank you.